Milligan with the Board of Directors for the Friends of the Oklahoma Center for the Book. It's my pleasure to chat with the winner of the 2021 Oklahoma Book Award in the Design and Illustration category, Anthony Roberts. Welcome, Anthony, and congratulations. Thanks, Troy. Hi. You can call me Tony. All my friends do. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Uh, how exciting is it to have been nominated and won your third Oklahoma Book Award for your design work for the book Renegades, Bruce Goff and the American School of Architecture? And it's, what are some of your thoughts and processes as you moved from the publication to the nomination of the actual award? Well, it's, it's always um, really excited, exciting to even be a finalist, really. Um, and, you know, to get the award is, you know, the next level. But this one was uh, it's kind of really special to me because this is the first one that I've won that it was... Uh, I really had a deep involvement with it from all the way from the conceptual early stages and uh, from a design perspective, it was all me, you know, I did every, tightened every screw and every bolt, did everything from the very earliest sketches to the final tweaks. So um, it, it was good, uh, it was exciting. And um, after publication, really, um, it just sort of dropped off my radar because I, I did it in context of my work at OU Press, University of Oklahoma Press. I'm the editorial design and production manager there. So there's always a lot of traffic going through. So it sort of dropped off my radar and it started getting some attention at some other design competitions. And so that, that was that was nice. And, and because of that, I hoped it would be a strong competitor for the Oklahoma Book Awards. And it definitely was. Um... How did you actually get involved in the design work for this particular project? Well, this was a, uh, a little bit unusual for us at OU Press because it, we were working directly with the College of Architecture on campus, who was um, doing this, an, an exhibition for the, the American School of Architecture, which is a style of architecture that um, Bruce Goff was sort of the, the, the originator of he was a teacher at OU that and this all his students and people who um, followed this style were called the American school so they had this uh, concept that they were going to do a book about about the school and it was going to coincide with an exhibition at the Fred Jones Jr. Museum of Art and um, I worked with the uh, then editor-in-chief Adam Kane because we knew it was going to be a really sort of a have a critical schedule you know, because it needed to be delivered in time for an event. And those are always really kind of, you know, nail biters. And, uh, and I was interested in Bruce Goff in the visual aspect, you know, that was appealing to me. And I'd done a previous, uh, designed a previous book on Bruce Goff. So it was kind of, my, you know, I was interested in that. And I knew that I was going to have to be, um, it would be good for me to do it because I could move it through the system quickly. So that's really kind of how I got involved. Oh, that's cool. There was so much out there that Goff and his students and the American School uh, did, and so much work to choose from. How did you possibly narrow it down to the work you chose to include in the design and layout of the book? Well, luckily I didn't have to. Um, that was taken care of by the contributors um, and they, have a, they had access to the full archive of American School and they really kind of selected the work based on the specific things they were talking about in each of their each of their chapters. So when we were involved with early meetings, you know, sort uh, sort of uh, guiding them on how to best uh, how we could best reproduce these, the kind of things we needed to do in in the pre-production process to make sure that everything was the best possible quality images. And uh, you know, we would sometimes steer them away from things and to you know uh, a, a, an image that might be less interesting in a book and toward one that might be more interesting if we were given the choice. But for the most part, it came directly from the College of Architecture. That, that's great. It sounds like uh, uh, you spearheaded uh, a, a big effort here. Some comments from the design and illustration judges pointed out that Renegades is illustrated throughout with architectural renderings, sketches, drawings, paintings, and photographs. There are fine design details that were found on nearly every page from the artistic font for the title, to the simple blue uh, blue line along the top of the captions. 
Among the remarkable style choices was the ample, most exaggerated white space at the bottom that appeared to almost push the body of the text upward while also enabling the illustration captions to sit uniformly at the bottom corner of each page. Beautiful cover, artwork by Ernest Burden, a student of Goff's attracts the reader, while design choices within keep us reading. How did you take and integrate all of the things you chose to do with the design and layout and the contributions you got from those contributors? Well, the, um, you know, the images were organized, like I said, according to the content. So they were all, they all belonged in a certain place, basically, in a, in a basic sequence. Uh, beyond that, I, I was, you know, I'm attracted to Bruce Goff and the American School, sort of the abstract, uh, unusual alien quality of it. That's, I think that's, it's really cool. So I sort of, for the, for the larger displays, I prioritized the most interesting visually thing. I was really coming at it from a purely visual uh, angle and not really thinking, I mean, keeping it in context of the content, but really emphasizing it based on what was interesting visually. And uh, for, in terms of the, the layout, um, the idea was just to keep it very minimal and clean and very almost uh, very structured to kind of emphasize the organic and Baroque quality of of the illustrations and the, the architectural drawings. I thought that that would help emphasize, emphasize that um, aspect of, of that. The, um, the color, it was, I wanted, I didn't want to make any uh, loud decisions in the layout. I wanted it to be sort of transparent, but interesting. And I thought that the, I mean, I, one of the, I would play with space, you know, like some unusual margins just to kind of, make it interesting, unusual. And the blue, a bold one, you know, I wanted to use like very little color as part of the layout. And so I chose a, a very bright color and sort of use that as a navigational cue and also to tie it together with, with the outer, with the outer uh, cover. The inside of the cover is also blue. And there's also a hardcover edition of this, which is sort of a shadow edition. Its case is blue, its case is the same sort of cyan blue. Okay. What do you hope the readers left with after being drawn into the book for the layout of the text and those fantastic visuals? I mean, as I looked through it, I was just kept wanting to turn the page to see what, what, what you were going to do next with the layout and design. Well, like I said, hopefully it's, it's hopefully the design is quiet enough where, you know, the, the, the content of the book and the imagery can be front and center because they're really, the, it's not about the, design of, of it's not about my role it's really more about um, finding a way an interesting way to make the content and the images just to support those because you know, that's really what what people are showing up for is the is the drawings uh, and, and i i can vouch as somebody that's read through the book that it uh you've you've succeeded with your goal you've pushed the, the context and the content to the forefront and kept it flowing with the design. And it just draws the reader in. So job well done on that. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> you know, part of the American school's focus was on materials and just given the, the, the budget and the time constraints of producing the book and just the practicalities of producing a book at scale, that's not really uh, an element that I could play off of. So instead I sort of, you know, the, the lattice motif, just try to pick up some, some references to some of the forms of the architecture rather than uh, the material aspect, which the exhibition really played up the material side of the American school. In, in uh, playing up the material, going back to something you said earlier, uh, myself personally, I've been kind of fascinated with Mo more modern types of designs and less traditional. And uh, you talked a little bit about some of the alien type influences and some of that. Um, what, what draws you to those types of, uh, of images and, and how did you work with trying to incorporate something that appealed to you uh, in the hopes that it would also appeal to readers of the context of the book? 
Oh, uh, well, why am I attracted to that? I couldn't tell you. It's just, um, this just an aspect of my personality, I guess. Um, and I thought that <clears throat> the, 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 the forms and the drawings were so unusual that if they were presented in a large way that they would, it would kind of emphasize that. And I, whether people, uh, viewers, I mean, it's sort of the viewers of this are going to know who, what the American school is. So you kind of have a, an audience built in, but I think that they, they might be able to see it in a different way. Like some of the pages are, are, uh, 100% size details of these drawings because the, some of the drawings, the originals are very large, you know, 30 inches by 24 inches, huge oh, wow. drawings. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, reducing those to even the large oversized page, you, you lose some of the, the, the detail. So in, in some cases I would, you know, choose a section to reproduce at actual 100% size so you could get so if you who might not be able to see these objects at the exhibition in person and get a sense of the, you know, the physical quality of the drawings. No, I mean, I, like, I, I'm just a stout. I just love the book. Uh, any final remarks for the readers of Renegades or viewers of this interview that you'd like to leave them with? Well, I'd like, I'd like to thank the Center for the Book for the Recognition first off. And uh, a, a project like this is um, takes a long time to put together. It's got a lot of moving parts, and it was it takes a lot of people to make it work. I was not by any means the only person working for this. Uh, OE Press, uh, their then editor in chief Adam Kane was involved early on in the conceptual stage. Stephanie Adia Evans is our project editor. She was a huge part of of the moving this through the production and editorial pipeline. Also, Anna Maria Rodriguez at OE Press. She's uh, provided a lot of production support and, and moving materials around, making sure things were the way they needed to be and, and were where we expected them when we expected them there. Uh, College of Architecture, College of Architecture, of course, these are the contributors. Uh, they did a lot of stuff just to, 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 on the front, even further front end to make this thing possible. Uh, Angela Pearson, Stephanie, um, Pilot, Luca Guido, Tony Criccio, and uh, some of the folks at the DigiLab, the OU Libraries, who really did a great job of digitizing these unusually large uh, and challenging drawings. Yeah, and, and I'm sure they appreciate that credit. Thank you so much for your time, Tony. On behalf of the people and the teams that put together the Oklahoma Book Awards, the judges, the board of directors itself, congratulations, and we look forward to see seeing what you and the people you work with uh, put together in the future. Thank you. Thanks very much, Troy.